Okay, so um, we're going to talk about hyperbolas. Um, and hyperbolas, you know, they kind of look like a double parabola in a sense. So, for example, um, I'm not going to draw the x and y axis, but a hyperbola would look like this, almost like two parabolas, right? Opening up and down. Um, so this is one type of hyperbola, and the other type is this, you know, opening left and right. So um, for hyperbola, obviously, this point that is in the middle, or in the center, I'll just put C, is the center of the hyperbola. And just like in an ellipse, the center is represented by the ordered pair HK. H is the x-coordinate of the uh, center, and K is the y-coordinate of the center. These um, points on the like edges of the parabola, right? These are called vertices, right? So these are the vertices here and here. So uh, the line that goes through the vertices in the center is called a transverse axis. So in this case, that's an RS. The transverse axis is vertical in order to go through the center in these vertices. And in this case, the transverse axis is horizontal. Transverse axis horizontal. T R A N S V E R S E. <laughs> so, um, A little more information, okay, before I go into the equations. Let me read this up. So the distance from the center of a, a hyperbola to a vertex, one vertex of a hyperbola, is A, represented by A. So um, obviously from one vertex to the next would be twice A. So same thing here, the distance from the center to one vertex is A. And before I talk about B, let me actually show you what the equation will look like. Now, x minus h to the b squared. The equations, before I do, the equations look very similar to the equations of an ellipse. But, let me write the two variations in you guys so maybe you can see what is different. Um, so y minus k squared over a squared minus x minus h squared over b squared equal to 1. This one is x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus a squared over b squared is equal to 1. So if you recall from ellipses, obviously the center is a plus instead of a minus. So in uh, with hyperbolas, or if you have these types of equations, if you have a minus in the middle, automatically it's a hyperbola instead of an ellipse. The only other thing that changes, right? Notice that in an ellipse, A is always larger than B. So therefore, A squared and B squared, they move dependent on whether the major axis is vertical or horizontal. Here, A squared stays in its location and the x and the y stuff moves. And, you know, obviously this is not commutative, right? Subtraction is not commutative, so I can't just um, switch my x and my y stuff. I'm gonna switch, I'm sorry, I can't just switch my a squared with b squared, I'm switching the top. So, um, I can't just switch them and have the same type of equation. If the x stuff is leading, then my transverse axis is horizontal. If the y stuff is leading, then my transverse axis is vertical. A squared is always in, fr in, the, in the first, um, uh, in front of the first, or underneath the first denominator. Now, there's some other stuff. What is B and such like that? So, I know you've heard of asymptotes. So, what we do sometimes with a hyperbola, zoom in for a second so you can see this. What we do sometimes with a hyperbola is we have the center and we have the, the distance from the center to the vertices is A. But then we have this thing called B 
right? Let's say B is over here. So B is the distance from the center to an endpoint here. Now this point doesn't have a term. It doesn't really mean anything. But what it does is it gives us this rectangle that's not necessarily part of the graph, right? Because that's why I'm putting it as a dotted line. It's not part of the graph. But what it does is it gives us what we call the asymptotes of the hyperbolas. The asymptotes of a hyperbola go through the vertices of this um, rectangle and the center. So this is one asymptote, and it has to go through the, uh, the corners of the rectangle and the center, and this is another asymptote. And the asymptotes obviously also are not necessarily part of the graph. What they do is they give us, um, or they tell us how wide the quote-unquote parabolas in the hyperbola open. It'll tell me how wide this is going to open and how wide this is going to open. So B is the distance from the center to um, one end of this rectangle. That's where B is. That's where B comes from. Now, obviously, B doesn't have to be smaller than A. B could be larger than A. There's no restriction. Whereas an ellipse, A has to be bigger than B because A corresponds to the major axis. B corresponds to the minor axis, and the major axis is always bigger than the minor axis. Well, here, A and B do not, A doesn't have to be bigger than B, which is why to determine if the transverse axis is vertical or horizontal, I'm always looking at what's happening on the top, what's leading. If X is leading, the transverse axis is horizontal, and it opens left and right. And if the Y is leading, the transverse axis is vertical, and it opens up and down. So let's talk about the equations of these asymptotes. So they're lines, right? And the way that I kind of memorize whether the slope is A over B or B over A is if I have, you know, my transverse axis is vertical here, right? To get the equation of this line, I'd have to go from this point to, let's say, this point. I have to go up A and over B. Up A and over B. So my slope is up A and over B. So this is K plus or minus A over B times X minus H. And this one is y equals k plus or minus b over a times x minus h. So um, there's not a lot of variation between, you know, the equation and the equation of the asymptotes. Because sometimes you're asked for the equation of the asymptotes. The only difference between these two is a over b versus b over a. So again, if I, to memorize that or to help, if my transverse axis is vertical, I've got to go up a and over b. So a over b would be my slope. And if my transverse facts axis is horizontal, I've got to go up B and over A. So B over A is my asymptote. We talk about foci, right, or focus for singular, foci, plural. And those are within the parabolas, within the parabolas. So, you know, inside, you know, these curves that together are called my hyperbola. And, um, you know, the distance from the center, this is, this is very similar to... Um, ellipses, the distance from the center to one focus is C, represented by C. And again, there is a relationship between A, B, and C um, for an ellipse. And there's a, a relationship between A, B, and C for hyperbola. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So be careful with um, the difference between this one for a hyperbola and you know the other one for an ellipse. A squared plus B squared is C squared here. A squared minus B squared for an ellipse. Notice that F is bigger, or, or the distance from the center to the focus is bigger than the distance from the center to a vertex. So C is greater than A. Um, and then again, B doesn't have to be greater than or less than A. It doesn't matter. So um, th these are the details of a hyperbola.